Hi guys, welcome to our channel. Today we're going to tour DC's infamous landmarks. We'll tour by biking and foot while learning some histories. This video tour will be in parts, so tune in to watch all of the series. We starts here, the tidal basin area where we parked our car. There are plenty of space available. It is a digital metered parking lot, in effect every day except December 25th. The rate is $2.30 an hour for a maximum of 3 hours. This lot fill up quickly, especially in the weekends, so try to get here early. There are additional metered street parking by the National Monument which also fill up quickly. Or try parking lot A and B, about a mile out on Ohio Drive Southwest. What a beautiful day, about 60 degrees in autumn. By the way, these are cherry trees which blooms in springtime. A must-see cherry blossom festival. Check out our video. In a nice day like this, it's great to pedal boat in the tidal basin area. Boat fits four. Rentals are for an hour block seven. The rates are $38 on weekdays and $40 on weekends and holidays. Off we go to Jefferson Memorial. By the way, there are many options of electric bikes and scooters to easily rent using their apps. We brought our own bikes though. Wow, it's so nice. We really enjoy this biking, the views, the weather, just perfect. Use cautions when using bike or scooter through this route as we are sharing this pathway. A bit history of these cherry trees. So, in 1912, Japan gifted 3,000 cherry trees to the United States as a symbol of friendship and diplomacy, strengthening ties between the two nations. Whoa, how about that? The cherry blossom, or sakala, is an important cultural symbol in Japan, representing the transient nature of life and celebrated through the Hanami tradition. The cherry trees serve as a long-lasting symbol of peace, renewal, and hope, reminding both nations of their shared history and values. The gifting of cherry trees facilitated international cooperation and fostered tourism, contributing to economic benefits for the areas where they bloom. Educational events centered around cherry blossoms promote learning about Japanese history and culture, deepening connections between the two countries. The annual National Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, D.C. draws millions of visitors, promoting cultural exchange and appreciation between Japan and the U.S. The Cherry Blossoms Festival goes around this tidal basin. They look so beautiful. Now, you see beautiful fall foliage. We are getting closer to Jefferson Memorial. The Jefferson Memorial is located in West Potomac Park on the Potomac River. It was designed by John Russell Pope and built by John McShane. The memorial's design was inspired by the Roman Pantheon and Jefferson's own design for the rotunda at the University of Virginia. In 1934, Congress passed a joint resolution establishing the Thomas Jefferson Memorial Commission. The resolution went so far as to state the exact location of the memorial at the intersection of Constitution and Pennsylvania Avenue. This is just east of the front of the National Archives building. In 1935, John Russell Pope was hired to design the memorial. An architect trained in the Beaux-Arts tradition, Pope's tastes were mainly classical-style buildings. He also designed the National Archives building, among others in D.C. In 1936, President Roosevelt decided that the location at Constitution and Pennsylvania is too small and the commission is granted the power to determine a new location. Many locations are proposed including creating an island in the center of the tidal basin so that the memorial could be in direct line, on on axis, with the White House. Though the island concept did not continue, this is an important stage where the placement of the memorial in line with the White House is determined. In 1936, President Roosevelt decided that the location at Constitution and Pennsylvania is too small and the commission is granted the power to determine a new location. Many locations are proposed including creating an island in the center of the tidal basin so that the memorial could be in direct line, on on axis, with the White House. 
Though the island concept did not continue, this is an important stage where the placement of the memorial in line with the White House is determined. In 1937, the Commission adopted the placement of the memorial on the south bank of the Tidal Basin, in line with the White House. In 1938, construction started on the memorial site. In 1939, a ceremony was held in which President Roosevelt laid the cornerstone of the memorial. In April 13, 1943, the Jefferson Memorial was dedicated on Jefferson's 200th birthday. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt presided over the ceremony. Thomas Jefferson, a spokesman for democracy, was an American founding father, the principal author of the Declaration of Independence 1776, and the third president of the United States 1801-1809. Off we go to the National Monument. The Washington Monument, designed by Robert Mills and eventually completed by Thomas Casey and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, honors and memorializes George Washington at the center of the nation's capital. The structure was completed in two phases of construction, one private 1848-1854 and one public 1876-1884. Built in the shape of an Egyptian obelisk, Evoking the timelessness of ancient civilizations, the Washington Monument embodies the awe, respect, and gratitude the nation felt for its most essential founding father. When completed, the Washington Monument was the tallest building in the world at 555 feet, 5 to 1 8 inches. Despite difficulties raising funds, construction began on the Washington Monument in 1848. The cornerstone was laid on July 4th with upwards of 20,000 people in attendance. Builders commenced work on the Blue Nice Foundation, an 80-foot square step pyramid. With the substructure completed, the builders then proceeded to the above-ground marble structure, 55 feet 1.5 inches square at the base, using a system of pulleys, block and tackle systems, and a mounted derrick to hoist and place the stones, inching the structure skyward. By 1854, the monument had reached a height of 156 feet above ground, but a turn of events stalled construction. In 1853, a new group aligned with the controversial Know Nothing Party gained control of the Washington National Monument Society in the Society's periodic board election. Having always struggled to gather funding, the society's change in administration alienated donors and drove the society to bankruptcy by 1854. Without funds, work on the monument slowed to a halt. Architect Robert Mills died in 1855. For more than two decades, the monument stood only partly finished. The Washington Monument was dedicated on a chilly February 21, 1885, one day before George Washington's birthday which fell on a Sunday that year. After the completion of the iron staircase in the monument's interior, the Washington Monument was first accessible to the public in 1886, closed much of 1887 until it could be better protected from vandals, and reopened in 1888 with a public elevator. The original steam-driven elevator, with a trip time of 10 to 12 minutes to the top of the monument, was replaced with an electric elevator in 1901. The National Park Service was given jurisdiction over the Washington Monument in 1933, and the first restoration of the structure began in 1934. Additional restoration work occurred in 1964, 1998 to 2001. In 2011 to 2014 to repair damage following an earthquake and from 2016 to 2019 for modernization of the elevator. Watch our video to see the inside. Off we go to the US Capitol building. See you in part two of this video. Thanks for watching. Please support this channel. Like, comment, subscribe, and share.